G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Murray Ground Fishing. It's one of those episodes today. The episodes that are said to be people's least favourite, but for some reason do the best on YouTube. So I'm doing one of those today. I have had question after question after question about this subject about bait cast rods and reels. Uh, what rod to get, what reels to go on rods, some cheaper entry point models, some mid-range sort of price decency things, and some top of the line models and what not. So I've had a lot of questions about that and I put a lot of thought into doing a video about this subject and I keep saying no to myself. I keep thinking no, I'm not going to do it because I, I have diver gear. I have diver reels, I have some diver rods, I have a couple of other rods, but mainly diver reels, mainly diver rods. I can't really go through anything other than the stuff I have with you guys. Then my wife had a pretty good idea. She said, why don't I contact a tackle store and go into the tackle store, play with some rods and reels on camera, chat to the staff that know what's best and portray that to you guys in a video. So that's what I'm doing today. Guys, before we go any further, if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, share, all of the goodness because we do answer your questions and help you out, but we also put up some footage from fishing. If you haven't checked out our other videos, uh, why not jump back and have a look at some of our things. We've got a Queensland series running at the moment. We've uh, just put our first COD video up for this year. So there's a bit of content up there, so it really helps us out, guys, if you bang on that subscribe button and go and watch some of our uh, our videos we really appreciate the most important stop of the trip Polly's Pocket Cafe a litre of life salted, salted caramel goodness Well guys, I'm set up here in Trellies in Shepparton. Uh, the guys have been really helpful this morning. We've gone through, looked at some reels and rods, and we're gonna run through them real quickly with you now. At some point, uh, the guys might come in and have a bit of a say about them, but otherwise we'll just get stuck into it. So, starting at basics, look, and there they're gonna fall right. Starting at the start with entry-level reels and rods, if you're just getting into bait casting. I've got three sittings aside here, which we'll go through in a minute. Now these are the absolute entry level. You don't want to go any cheaper than that. You can get cheaper rods and reels, but you're just causing yourself a lot of trouble. To start with, so these three are all um, under $160. So you get your rod and your reel. You've got the Abu Garcia Silver Max really smooth little action on a really nice reel deep spool pretty comfortable to use right and left hand wind and this comes on the salty fighter uh, rod 139.99 at the moment in here not a huge rod as you can see uh, nice short one but if you're just getting started and you're not sure whether you're going to stick to it this is the sort of combo that will do you well also um, if you're trying to get your kids into fishing, things like this are pretty much spot on. So we've got this one here. This combo is actually by Rapala, and it's a five foot six, four to six kilo rod, and a Rapala. I think it's a Nar Yeah. Power tip rod, and. This is surprisingly smooth, this reel. I um, never ever considered Rapala reels. Uh, guys said if you're getting into it, this is actually not a bad little spot to start as well. At the moment is a hundred bucks. So guys, you're looking at hundred dollars for a rod and reel. Now, it's pretty, pretty solid, a little bit heavy, but so if you're getting started off and you don't want to break the bank, you want to see if you're in, uh, into bait cast fishing, that's not a bad spot to start either. Thirdly, in the really cheap beginner stuff, you got this Robex. It's a distributed brand of Jarvis Walker, and it's a revenge rod with a Oberon reel. Now, again, that combo is 99.99, 100 bucks. 
for a full setup. Obviously, you're going to put line on it and you know what leader and, and that sort of thing. But if you're getting into it, guys, and you're not sure, these things are not too bad. If you go any cheaper than this, you're going to start getting into trouble with casting. It makes it harder for you. So if you go sort of under this price range, what happens is you get your base cast set up, you start using it, and it impedes your usage because it, it's harder to use, and you will decide that you don't like bait casting. Whereas if you spend that a little bit more, it makes it easier to use. So that's another good little starting point in there. If you're wanting to get into it and you're happy to spend a little bit more money, then you can move up in price. So we've got these couple here from Rapala, and you're looking at $130, $160 for the reel when these combos were under that. But the benefits you get from spending a little bit extra money, like this is a very smooth, very well built looking reel for the for the price. So if you're not wanting to come in super cheap and you want to move up a little bit, you start looking into the range of these sorts of things and uh, and you'll notice the benefits straight away. We've also got the big man Trilly himself here. If you do have questions, coming in and seeing a bloke like this who knows these reels back to front is going to benefit you a lot more than watching myself talk about them on the screen here. Now also when it comes to the rods as well, you want to feel the rod in your hand while you're getting the pointers from the blokes who know what they're talking about. So we're going to help you out as much as we can here, but if you're really interested and you really can get into it, come in and see guys like Trelly. Um, obviously if you're in the other, other side of the country, it's going to be hard to come and see Trelly. But uh, go and see a local tackle saw holder. Yeah. And, um, and, and you got another shop? Yeah, we've got four shops here. Four we've shops. Got, uh, one in Bendigo, uh, one in Geelong, yep. one in Laverne, uh, sort of west of Melbourne, and, uh, and obviously a flagship store in Chippewa. Right here, so four, four shops, so pretty much uh, all across the state. You can go and see one of Trelly's blokes and they're all well-trained yeah. fellas. Oh, uh, they're mad, yeah. Look, I'll, I'll get to Geelong at, say, the opening time down there at 8.30, 9 o'clock, and the guys will be there and show me a picture of a fish, and they'll say, oh, when'd you get that? <laughs> oh, on the way to work. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, they're <laughs> well, just... So you're into their fishing. Oh, and Benny goes the same. Justin over there will send me a photo at 6 o'clock in the morning or 5 o'clock in the morning with a cod that he's caught out of the lot and river. So, and they're the blokes yeah. you want to be buying gear from, the yeah. guys that know what they're talking about. Yeah, so I'm not too, stay, too sure what stage you got up to. Yeah, so we've to? covered the, the real cheap starter yep. um, combos and, yep. and the couple of Rapala sort of if you're stepping up a little bit. So mid-range we're sort of looking um, around this. Yeah, your Dial Alexa is probably one of your, your mid-range uh, reels, you know, it's around that sort of, you know, $350 mark roughly. A little bit bigger capacity, That's this one's pretty popular with the swim bait rods, so um, you can load that up with, say, 50 pound line, so, yep. you know, if you guys out there who want to, you know, actually get into the bigger stuff and land them. Um, and um, I, I personally use um, a zillion, and I picked this thing up, it's actually really heavy. Yeah. Like, you can tell it's a, a really well built real there's a lot of weight in that and so um, that I'm, yeah. I'm not sure where that one went <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll shake up some <laughs> before you go that's all right no worries and eight kilos of drag on that one as yeah well. so yeah, that's getting so up to about a 30 pound mark in the old in the old yep. uh, school so that's why a lot of people like that particular reel so, so you can put a you, know, you can put a lot of stopping power on that besides burning the thumbs out that's right yeah no, that's <laughs> good so, yeah. so also in mid-range what else would you Sort of yeah, well, a lot of the mid-range stuff now is 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 technology that's been brought down to the mid-range that yep. wasn't available before at the sort of prices. Because I'll go straight to this top of the range. So this this reel is a little Shimano DC Titanium, um, Japanese made. is only was only available to the Japanese domestic market. Yeah, it's up around the thousand dollar mark. Um, that's not mid-range, don't worry. No, <laughs> but yeah, but this this reel, which all this sort of technology, so this is probably about six, seven years old. This reel. Yep. So all the technology that's been introduced to this reel over that period of time is now starting to find its way down as things do, you know, TVs and all that sort of stuff. So it's got a little computer in the actual in the actual um, spool itself. Yep. It's just crazy as far as control. Your lure hits the water. It's still stripping line. Your spool's still spinning. So the lure stops and the spool spins over and the line wraps back over the spool and they twist around each other. Next minute you've got a bird's nest. And as is the way with fishing at the most inconvenient time, that's when yeah. the fish will grab your lure. Um, I mean, your mate's in there too before you. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, yeah. Your mate gets in the pressure on, no, stick it in, so the thumbs. That's what the DC is. Um, what's the snapper, DC? 
digital control. So yeah, the DC basically uh, a few different functions you can use with a DC. You can set it to light, um, a light as far as resistance yep. that, with that um, digital control, or a bit heavier. So exactly what you're saying is is um, you can you can use it actually casting into wind as well. So a lot of times you're using like bigger lures or you're using a lure with a with a, with a reasonable bit. And just just the, just the, the wind resistance on a, on a, on a you know, bit of wind that's coming in your face, and if you don't sort of like just tip your your thumb on the line to make your lure you know shoot through the wind, yep. if you, if that it starts to paddle, again your spool's going faster than your lure slows down, so it's not dragging the line off off your reel. So um, the DC allows you to control that type of thing. So sometimes you'll actually lose a little bit of distance yep. with the DC. But you'll gain a lot of control and you'll, you'll gain a lot of headspace as far as getting frustrated with um, with a few burst nests. Yeah, and that's... So, yeah, that's the way it's designed. So, then you can also set a light, so if you're casting those longer distance, it'll offer you, you know, less resistance. Yep. Yeah. Again, go okay, back to the thumb a little bit sometimes, right? But, but it, it, that does give you a, little, a lot of variance. That, that's the thing, if you're getting into bait casting, that if you're not going to a DC reel, you have to be aware that bird's nests and things are going to be something that you will deal with. Yeah. Um, and if you're looking at having to spend out a little bit of extra money, then maybe looking into something with the digital control is something you want to do because it will save you that headache and heartache right from the get go. Yeah, that's right. So we've taken the, you know, the older technology, which is, which is the new technology at the time, to come down through like the Shimano um, Curado uh, DC series in these ones here. Yep. And you know, they're around about the $400 mark. Uh, yep. Those ones there, we're talking $450. And then they've actually introduced it now. It's only just been brought out to the um, SLX range in the DC as well. So that one here again has a digital control in it, you know, that's sub $400 mark. So it gives you, you know, affordability or access to that sort of technology as far as casting um, control goes. So, yeah, so we're talking mid range, uh, we, we touched on the Lexa here, $350 odd, yeah. and in a similar price point, you've got this reel here that's actually got digital control. So. Yeah. You know, um, it really comes down to personal preference, but if that's something you're interested in, it's getting more and more affordable every year. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, so um, uh, again, a different thing. Like that's a pretty heavy one with uh, you know, made for um, swim baits and things like that. Yep. This is the lighter version. You know, some of these reels you've know, got the new Hagani system as well, the materials in. Yep. Which uh, the ability with the Hagani system or any reel that's made of really really rigid material, lightweight is is a big advantage. Um, and having them rigid so don't get any distortion in your actual frame. Yep. Once you get a little bit of distortion in your frame, it offers resistance on your bearings and things like that. So again, if it's, if it's rigid and you've got your line which is being pulled straight from the spool like that, um, it gives you a much, much smoother um, uh, technology in your material, so it gives you a much smoother experience in the casting. Yep. So we've got the, uh, the uh, Zillion here, which is, I use a Zillion at home, just not this model here. This is a um, you know six hundred dollar reel, so you're starting to get right up in the top price range here. Now this is a crazy cranker model, so it's a five point five gear ratio. And if you don't know about gear ratios, that, that's all about how fast you spool spins or re retrieves your line in regard to how fast you spin the handle. So if you've got a really high um, ratio, you spin this slow, your spool goes quick, and vice versa. Um, with swim baits in particular, um, slow is the way to go. Actually, um, it's a pretty common saying with natives, um, if you think you're going slow enough, uh, go slower. Um, you really want to retrieve your lures slowly. Personally, I have a couple of higher gear ratio and a couple of lower gear ratio. I like to be able to mix it up depending on where I'm fishing. If I'm fishing in fast water, I want a, a high gear ratio and I don't have too much trouble slowing down my retrieve um, on myself. A lot of people can't get it into themselves to slow it down yeah. uh, on the handle. So yeah. then you start to look for a slower gear yeah. ratio. Sometimes so your head just doesn't tell you well, that's to just right, down, yeah. but A good way to sort of to know that is just to practice with your oars beside the boat. And, and match your, your retrieve to the, what your lure's doing. Yeah. So some of those big body lures, you know, you go, you go sort of so fast and just not doing it, you know, you slow them down a bit extra, you think, oh, that's mad, that's that's looks, that looks yeah. like the way it's supposed to be, but I'm going like really, really slow. Yep. So, yeah, so that's a point. So that that's, um, I would recommend a Zoom. I've thrown a lot of stuff on a Zoom. Um, and like, as I said at the start, I'm a diver man myself, and I don't think you can go wrong with that. No, I think I'm gonna butt in there with your, with your retrieve. 
um, is actually because because all these reels are like we're talking Murray Cod now at the moment, yeah, but yep. because it just overlaps like so much with Barramundi. Yep. Um, if you ever go up north and things like that, you can always take those little slices and, and, and things for like the trevally and stuff that you get out in the, in the mouths of the rivers yep. and queenies and things like that. So we need a fast retrieve. So um, so your bait casters will do that. Everything you do for the Murray Cod down here with your bait casters, you can take up there and pretty much duplicate. And that's only a matter of just one faster, just one faster there, yep. but um, again, it's a little bit speed sometimes. Um, and this here is the Stegs. This is on my Christmas list, Tegan, if you're watching. Um, <laughs> this is uh, getting up there. This is another hundred dollars on top. So you look at it. Um, oh, that's the same price, are they? Yeah, the same retail. Price at the moment. Yeah, the retail on that one is. Yeah, so six six hundred. Yeah. Higher, so yeah. So the. Um, but the Steez is a very, uh, a very nice reel from yeah. the times I've used other people, so I just uh, don't have one myself. Is there anything particular you want to add about? Um, you'll just reel? notice as you actually click this one in the free spool, um, you'll see that you probably picked up the camera there. You'll, you'll, you'll notice that the, the little um, the the T-ring system. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it um, you know, opens that area up there for the line to actually sort of work. So again, it's all about resistance. It's all about giving as little as resistance as you can. Once you put push it in the free spool and you cast it, it's all about you know, no resistance basically. So, so. so Dog will bought uh, the T-Wing system out in the HLC series, um, which stands for Hyper Long Cast. Um, and the idea is, uh, you can see here on, a, on most um, bait cast reels, you just have a hole. Your, your line has to go through this point here and your line comes off the spool back here. So when it's not dead centre, yeah. it's actually got friction on the side of your, um, your guide. With the height, uh, with the T wing system, it's a it's quite literally a hollow T, and it folds forward, which actually has a, a quite decent opening. So your line actually, for a much bigger part of your spool, doesn't have any friction on your guide. Mm. And when you click it back, it rolls back, so that yep. bottom half of your guide still uh, aligns the line onto the spool properly. Yeah, channels so, back into the yeah. right spot for retrieving. I'm a big fan of the T wing system. It's it's Extra. pretty good. Now uh, the next two I might let you talk about because they're out of my ballpark. Yeah, these ones here are more your round style of thing, you know. Your um, Ogun, the in a diet. You know, this is another sort of like getting up to that heavy duty type of reel. Some people prefer these as far as the older style round ones, whereas these ones you were talking about low profile, so they, they, they for some people fit in your hand a little bit better. Yep. Um, whereas some people prefer the rounder ones. So again, different qualities. Just look into you know your specs as far as your, your retrieve rate and how much drag you can actually get on some of these reels because yep. they do offer some, some heavier drags. Um, so, so that's that one there. And again with these ones here, you know, go using probably bigger line as far as 50 pound braids and things like that, uh, these ones are built like, uh, again, some of these reels are built like little tractor gearboxes, these things, they're, they're just that tough. So, yeah. again, so sometimes I'll actually offer you um, some ability then also to uh, put in aftermarket drags yep so if you're going on the black bass where you go we want to just want a really heavy drag you can get some other drags you can pop them into those and bring them up to like eight eight twelve kilo top and I've, I've seen a lot of guys online using that exact reel throwing swim baits in the big impoundments targeting the big fish so they're obviously up to the task yeah the, the yeah get a little bit heavier yep. yeah they offer a, a really nice cosmetics you know they've done with the um, the precision drill holes which ties them like the reel a little bit at the same time but but um, the bling is for this fact, you know. Sometimes just, if you don't catch a fish and you're using good gear, you still feel good. It's still comfortable, <laughs> isn't it? Um, and, and that's a really good point, actually. You might start at the lower end where we started in the video, and at the end of the day, you're gonna be way more fatigued because the gear's heavier, and yeah. it's clunkier, and it's got more friction. Everything about it's harder to use. You pick it up in the shop and you go, oh yeah, that's good. That's not the same as having your line on it, having your lure on it, and being out on the water for four, five, six hours, if you're as silly as I am, 14 hours. Um, what happens is you have mates pick up your expensive gear and they go, oh, it feels a little bit better, but it doesn't feel that much better. And after six hours on the water, it's infinitely better. Yeah, that's um, right. And that's something to consider as well. The, yeah. the more you use it, um, the more benefit you will notice in spending a little bit more money as well. Yeah, that's right. And again, some of the materials, like I say, you know, offer those really, really light rigs. And, and I know it's a bit of a different subject, and it's a whole different show as far as, as doing rods. But if you're matching them with some of the, um, you know, the high-grade rods, you match them up, they're super light. It's just 
roll them over your shoulder and cast them those Yeah. yeah. Just additionally, guys, while we're on the subject of reels, if you're getting into fishing and you've, or you've been into spin fishing and you're in bait fishing on your spin reels, you can swap your handle from side to side. When you get a bait reel, it's fixed. So if you get a right hand wind, you're stuck with it. You get a left hand wind, you're stuck with it. And I want to touch on this because um, more and more people are coming to this conclusion, but there's still a lot of people that, that haven't came, come, come over yet. And, uh, I really think that if you're right-handed, you should use your left hand to wind. And the reason for that is, is your right hand is your dominant hand. Your left hand, all it does is spin a handle. You've got your drag, right, then you spin. Drag takes out, you spin a handle. When you're fighting the fish, all of that strength is through your right hand. When you're casting, it's with your right hand. So what you want to do is you want to cast thumb with your dominant hand, and then wind and fight the fish in. If you cast in like this, you cast with your right hand, then you have to swap over, then you have to wind, and you've got that downtime. And it's just not as efficient, you get more fatigued, it's not as comfortable, and when you're fighting a big fish, you're using your non-dominant hand. So that's just something to consider when you're looking at getting a reel. It takes a little bit of practice, once you get used to it, it's actually really easy because all this does is spin that. You don't have to be super coordinated to do that. Where you want your strength and coordination is in your dominant hand. So guys, when you're looking at the reels, if it doesn't feel comfortable to start with, just consider that once you decide you're stuck with it and when you're out fishing all day and you have to swap all day, that can get real tiring. So really um, make a note of considering having your handle on the opposite side to your dominant hand. With the mention of rods, yep. uh, we're not going to touch massively on rods as we've said because it's just so many, but we will touch on three for now and if you want to look at rods, um, you can look at all the spectrum on online all day long. It's not the same as picking a rod up. So um, coming down to the shop really, really makes a big difference. Um, I'm going to start, these three are swim bait rods. Um, it's what we were calling an affordable swim bait rod, a yep. sort of entry level, $110. Um, what are we doing? An eight foot sort of? Yeah, looking about seven, close to eight foot. Close, um, close to eight foot. Bait rod in your Shimano Mercura there. So um, these ones are yeah, in a price range where you can, where you can enter, enter into a swim bait market and, and if, you, if you're not in a situation where you know, you're out all the time, you're not, you're not, you're not forking a lot of money that the rod's going to sit all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, which which uh, will happen if you're not um, with the dedicated swim bait rod. If you're not throwing swim baits, you're really not using it. Um, although the benefits of having a swim bait rod are there. Uh, this is the the new model of the swim bait rod I use at home. Um, it's the Daiwa Chachula. I actually quite like mine. Um, pretty standard with a swim bait rod. You've got a, a big butt. Um, and a bit, bit better handle and the butt is here you're throwing big stuff all all day it gives you that extra lev leverage on your arm if you've got a standard short butt you don't have that same control um, obviously the distance uh, the length sorry does help with the distance but you've got to be aware that when you're using these it's because you're throwing big weights okay so you kind of want that length in most applications um, this one's a little bit higher end, like your um, retail, I uh, recommend retail's at $300. Um, but it's actually a really nice rod, in my opinion, and that comes from experience. Not this exact model, but the model before, uh, and I really enjoyed using it. Yeah, that, these sorts of rods are really sort of, like you say, matched up with some of your bigger lures. And what we can offer at our, our stores is, you know, if, you, if you really want to sort of use one, take it out, we'll spool up a wheel. Yep. Give you a rod. If you take it out, you come back the next day and say, "Look, it really doesn't suit what I want to do. We'll just swap it out for something else, or we'll work, work out, give you money back, whatever." So it really is. You know, you want to be able to have the the, the, the use and the benefit of it. But sometimes you get in the shop and you just have a bit of a flick in the field. God, it feels like a broomstick. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But you don't realise that some of the bigger lures you, that you're using, you need, you need that weight to load them, yeah. to, to load them, and and, and, uh, and get that flick out there. But what we sort of do, and what we're trying to always explain, with a swim bait rod or any rod, is is you've got a you, you've got a a, a lower uh, spectrum which is your heavy to your light. So 
and obviously all your rods fit in to that little spectrum. Yep. So if you use a, a, a poorer quality rod, you're sure you can pinpoint that, that actual lure spectrum down to a, a, a particular lure. Yep. But if you use some of the better quality rods that are made of better materials, a few benefits, it becomes lighter so it's easier to use all day. Plus it will take in a, a, a bit bigger spectrum in your lure weight. So a good rod at high carbon and graphite uh, materials will give you lightness, it will allow you to really cast a bit heavier lure and a, and, a, and a little bit lighter one at the same time. And um, and not recommended, but I did only have my swim bait rod in the car one day and I walked the river flicking um, hard bodies and spinner baits with it. It was awkward, but it did, yeah. it did do it. Um, yeah. um, but, and as Trolley's just said, you there is a huge range of lures and rods, so just make sure you show your missus this bit of the video when you come home with four different rods, um, because you need them. Uh, but you guys have come up with a solution, sort of, to the problem in this rod here, haven't you? Well, what we do is you sort of take, take the, the consensus, or um, the, the consensus from, from all the sort of people who come in and sort of want a particular rod. So, um, so we've gone to Wilson's with the Venom and yep. we've got these guys to design a rod that is like, look, it's, it's not as long as some of them, yep. you can still cast a swim bait with it and you still cast most of your heavier lures with it. Um, again, what you mentioned about the long handle and, and being able to sort of pick that off your elbow, you still got that. Yep. They're, they're great for putting them in, even in a rod hole. Yep. Put them in a rod hole, your, your wheel's not banging on the, on the boat and sometimes that's all it takes, like you're in some of these big open waters. It might be a case of, you know, you let some of these um, lures out at you know, 30 yards, you know, stick them in a rod holder and just go for a drop. Yep. You know, and you can have the, these rods and do that type of thing. Yep. Plenty of guts in this one, the Venoms are excellent like that, they're um, you know, the strongest crowbars, you know, as far as coming down the street and that type of thing. Uh, quality guides with the Fuji guides and all that sort of but it was really a, a make-up of, yeah, look, I want to experience the swim bait sort of fishing. You don't want to but limit yourself completely. You haven't pigeonholed that rod into a swim bait yep. into a swim bait thing where you say, Oh, I'm not gonna take this too long. You can troll with it, you can cast it, you know, a lot of our laws with it, but it's one of your swim bait rods. And and this um, really grabbed my attention when we started talking about it earlier today. Um, at the moment I don't have a boat, so I'm land based, which this is fine for. But I'm doing a lot of fishing out of a kayak and using an eight, almost eight foot fishing rod out of a kayak yes, uh, is uh, it's a bit of a challenge in itself. Yeah. So being able to throw a swim bait with yeah. something that's in that shorter profile of rod is yeah. actually pretty beneficial as well. That's right, yeah. I'll touch on one other one here too, which um, which is the Miller rods. Now the Miller rods are basically, um, now EML has designed a lot of rods for a lot of different people over here. And this is going higher end again, isn't This it? is going a little bit higher end again, like not, not too bad, you know, you're getting up to $450 mark. Um, a lot of these are two-piece, so you can actually break them apart, you know, pop them in your, in your car, which makes it a little bit, a little bit easier to sort of get them around. But basically what Ian's done is he's he's actually stripped everything off this blank that you don't need. And he's only put on the stuff that you do need, and he's picked on all the materials that's super, super light. So that's to retain all the feel of your blank. Yep. That one there's too. So he's got quite a few on his range. He's, he's adding to those range, but there's there's one there you know, that's called the ambush, which I believe is that that one in the middle too, as far as sort of you know, deals with a lot of yep. um, you know, a lot of what, what customers are after. So again, you know, the lowest possible guides without going ridiculous in price. There's very little, like a lot of these rods got very little bindings and uh, filler in them, so it takes a lot of blanks. Yep. So and that's this is um, yeah, also matched up to the feedback that he needs to build. So, yeah, so it's excellent. Yeah, it's a really good one. Yeah, so I think I think that's about all we can sort of cover in a video. Um, if you don't have an idea after that, um, like I said, you need to go in a shop. If you do have an idea after that, yeah. you, you still probably need to go into a shop. All of these reels, if you put them side by side, they look very similar to each other, and every single one of them feels completely different to the next. Mm you want to pick them up and play with them. But hopefully we've given you an idea of what you can look for and if you go into the shop, what you can ask about, um, starting at the beginning, going right up to the high end. When it comes to rods, guys, there is there's 500 different rods in the shop. Yeah. We, can't, we can't show you all the rods, but um, you know, when you when you go in and ask the guys in a shop, we'll they go, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we say, what are you doing? You're out of a boat, you're off the bank, you're going to Mulwala, you're going to Eildon, 
you know, what opportunities you've got to put them in the car. You know, we try and match up, you know, your budget, you know, if, you want to, if it makes you feel good to spend a thousand dollars, we can help you out. So, so yeah, but if you're on a budget type of thing and you want to, we'll pick on the best possible uh, quality rods um, to suit your different application that you're doing at the time. So, yeah. And they're the things you don't think about watching a video no. and that I can't help you with because it's a video. So um, it really does pay. Um, so thank you guys for being with us. Thanks very much, Trelly, for no the, um, the information. Yeah, thank and you for coming let, along. Let me set up in the shop and play yep. with all the reels. It's been it's been fun as. Yep. Love it. I'm probably going home broke and the wife will kill me. <laughs> but, you know, that happens. Anyway, guys, thank you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share. If you do have any other questions, drop them below. If you're in one of the areas that Trelly mentioned um, earlier, I'm gonna, I'll drop those links below as well. Stop into one of the shops and check them out. They've got a great range, good prices. And you guys do um, the occasional information like that thing throughout the year as well. It's yeah, look on our, so. our Facebook site, we've got the Trellies Clubhouse. Yep. Uh, as far as the Facebook site, and we, um, we have put a bit of information on there. Our Bendigo store, you know, we've got Justin and Karen Reese over there. Karen's one of the ambassadors, the Victorian ambassadors for women's recreation. Oh, she was at uh, the conference yesterday. Yeah, correct, correct. My daughter is too, Jacqueline. You know, Ross is here, but the family all involved. Um, but yeah, certainly, um, Certainly the, uh, the guys in the shop, I, I, uh, I, I think they're fun of them because they're, sometimes they're just overexcited sometimes, but that's what <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Righto guys, thank you very much. We'll catch you in the next one.